Well, I've got most of the filling done now on the face of the clock. So the time has come to sand it down. Now you can see, if you look closely here, there's little bits there, there's bits here, there's bits here. I may have to put some more on after. I don't want to put too much on at once because I want to avoid having to sand off any of the numbers. I'm going to have to repaint them, you see. So I'm going to try this little section here now. I'm going to see, move that out of the way. I want to try and sand this without damaging too much. Just going to put my glasses on for this now. Now I'm getting a bit intricate now. So initially it doesn't seem to have done anything at all. <laughs> Although there's a bit of stuff on the paper itself. Well, I don't know, it's coming through. See, this was a little bit high. I put some filler pieces in as well. Hoping that I could keep the colour constant. This is my worry here. I'm going to I'm going to actually peel that off with my fingernail because I don't want to lose any of the lettering if I can avoid it, especially a little diamond like that which would be that little diamond would be very difficult to recreate. So let's see how we go with this. Do the edges as well. I may, I'm going to have to touch it up a little bit because the colour is a little tiny little bit out. But it, overall it's not a bad fit actually, I'm quite pleased with it. And you can see those two pieces that are shining through. Those are pieces of this that I've actually put into it. So I'm just looking at how I've damaged that. So a little bit on the stuff there that I've got. I've got to be careful I don't go too far. Okay, I'm going to carry on with that now. And I'm going to get it all done. And then I'll show you what it looks like when I've finally done it. You don't want to see me just rubbing away like this for half an hour, do you? It's going to take more than half an hour, I'm sure. But... We're getting a step further now. I'm, I'm uh, almost ready for going back together now, this clock. Now this is where the skillful part comes in. I've got to try to match up to this clock face. Now as you can see it's like a creamy, creamy colour. So I've got some white paint, I've got some black paint and believe it or not, I've actually put a little bit of brass over there as well because it, the colour is very similar to what this is so I'm thinking I might be able to tint the white paint with it to get a good match now this is the, the skillful part now <laughs> so I'm just going to hope I can pull it off here now so first of all get rid of all this surplus paint here that I've got on my brush and I'm going to mix a little bit of this brass over with it and a tiny touch of black in there and let's see what how it looks I'm hoping that this will level out a little bit not quite dark enough that it's not liquid enough I'm afraid I was hoping that it might level itself up if I put it on it might find its own level but you never know Let's see what how it turns out. Right, 
Right, I'm going to I'm going to carry on with that, and I'll show you what it's like when it's finished. Okay, it's done now. It might look a little bit messy, but I'm hoping that it's going to sand down and going to take the same colour. So I've got to be very very careful. I'm just going to put a little bit more on this part here, so it, it'll be more level because it's I can see the brush marks in it, and then I'm going to leave it overnight to dry. And then I'm going to send it tomorrow and we'll see how that turns out. I did just fill it a little bit more so now I'm happy with that so I'm going to let that dry and we'll see what it looks like in the morning. Well I must admit I wasn't really happy with the finished surface so I've sanded it down and I've just mixed together some porcelain mix and I mixed it in with some yellow colouring so I've just put one little sample touch on there and as you can see that's not a bad colour. So I'm going to finish it off with that now. Well I'm a lot happy with the colour match now. So it's just a case of waiting now. And then in the morning I'm going to sand that off. And hopefully it's going to look something like. I'm hoping that's the last bit now. You've got to keep trying and trying until you get it right with this stuff. Well I must admit I'm not very happy with the outcome of this. So, I'm going to go back to the drawing board, I'm going to scratch all that out, how I do it I don't know, but I'm going to go and get some white porcelain and see if that's any better. It's the only thing I can do. Well, I've scraped off all the surplus now and already it looks better. So now I've got to put the white in and be very very careful with it, like at this point here, I'm going to use a very thin um, brush. I might even cut the bristles off so I have two or three bristles there and just slowly fill it up and I'm going to do it really gradually and then I'll show you what it's like after I've finished. Well I finally got it filled now with white stuff and I must admit from there it doesn't look too bad. What I've done, if you zoom in closely you can see where I've filled it and it may not look perfect but it's shiny and it's just a little bit off colour. One of the problems I have is that this is, can you see how it's kinked it's kink there? And they're at a different level so I can't really fill it in properly. But when it gets the bezel around it, it's not going to show very much. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to stain this new white filler. And I'm deciding I'm going to try it with a tea bag because I, I, that's quite a good stain. Uh, thing a tea bag so I'm going to do that and then I'll I'll put it in the bezel and I'll show you what it looks like because um, to be honest it's a hundred percent better than it was when it had all the copper showing and I think I think I'm going to get away with that now well I've got one of my wife's tea bags and I'm just going to give it a a little dab there and I'm going to give it a dab there. I'm just putting it on everywhere where I've filled. And then I'm going to leave it for a little while. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> There's no guarantee with this of course. But you know you've got to you got to keep experimenting with things. Try, try, try again. You know. If at first you don't succeed, give up and all that sort of thing. So I'm going to leave it at that now. A little bit missing there. Squeeze a little bit more out. I'll just let it all soak in. And then I'll, I'll dry it off and we'll see what it looks like later. As a very quick follow up to that, I decided to give it overkill. So I've laid it on the sink and I've squeezed the tea bag out. And I've covered all the bits that I've filled. So I, I'm giving it uh, double indemnity if you like. So I'm hoping that's going to stain it sufficiently. Well, after a lot of fiffing and faffing, I finally got the clock face done. Now it's not, I wouldn't say 100% perfect, but it's definitely 100% better than what it was before. And I've had to uh, renumber some of the um, numerals because they were they were wrong. I burnt my finger in the process because one of the clips at the back came off and 
I had to solder it back on and I accidentally touched the soldering iron in the wrong place. So this is now finally ready to go back together again and I'm so pleased it's about time as well it's gone on for a long time this okay guess what came the other day I'll just move that out of the way for a minute look what I've got it's a hundred percent synthetic lubrication for wristwatches wall clocks and grandfather clocks you can't just use anything to lubricate a clock you can't put WD-40 or engine oil on or anything like that so it has to be special oil, uh, special oil and I'm just ready for oiling up the working parts on this clock now that I cleaned incidentally I would advise anyone against using petrol or gasoline to clean the clock because I found it left a little film over it I've, I've read up that you can use it but uh, in experience I would recommend getting some proper clock cleaner so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this lid and oh that's good it's got a little applicator itself and what I'm going to do is all these little joints here all these little points are all things that turn so I have to put a little drop onto each of those and I'm going to put some onto this mechanism here that allows the pendulum to move I'm going to do it all at the other side too any little points there that have got moving parts all have to be lubricated and it all got to be done with just one drop so let's make a little start there I'm going to put one drop on that drop on that drop on that and so on going to do everything and then I'll give it a little bit of time before I put it back together you get the idea so this here is going to be a difficult one to do because it's got gears so maybe I should do it where the gears go together again I'm not putting too much on it's just just a, a, a literally a drop beautiful that's that's running that's running good now this is the adjuster actually makes it go fast fast this is the adjuster that makes it go faster or slower because it increases and decreases the, the distance between this can you see that that's where your pendulum swings right so I'm going to go through all that now oil it all up and then we're more or less ready for going back together I just wanted to mention here that since I've oiled it and it wasn't working before but it's going like the clappers now look at that and it's been striking as well this has been bing bonging as it's as it's reached a certain half hour so it's, it's promising that it means that uh, everything seems to be functioning okay so I'm really pleased about that so I'm just going to let it run down a little bit and then I can rewind it up again maybe stick a little bit of oil in the spring as well which I've already done so I've cleaned the inside as best as I can so it's uh, it's just wait wait and see now when it goes back together okay we're finally ready for this to go back together now as you can see I've got the dial all done up now and um, what I forgot to mention was that I, when I when I did all the final sanding on it I use water with it I run it under the tap because it's less abrasive on the porcelain and after the painting I found that it was a it was a matte paint that I'd used so I needed to varnish it and I didn't know what to use so I used some nail varnish clear nail varnish and it worked perfectly well so um, with this video I've left in all the experimental mistakes because you can always learn from these things right so now it's time for this to go back together again
I finally got the three screws in. That was a real struggle, I'll tell you. I can assure you that. And a little bit of the tiny, tiny piece of... Can you see that? Little tiny piece with, with numerals on as well. With lettering on. So I'm going to have to replace that as well. It's so brittle, this... Uh, this this material I've got to be very very careful with it but at least I've got the three main screws in now so I'm really pleased about that back on with it now Now I've just got to put the fingers back on and the pendulum in again and, and fingers crossed then it might or it should work but it takes a lot of messing I know that I've done it before. Now I've got the fingers on I'm going to wind it around hope I've got it on the hour and not the half hour. So it's striking on the half hour, but it's not bonging because the it's not lined up. So let's see how the, the timing is when it reaches the hour. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think that was nine. So I'm going to set that at 9 o'clock now and then I'm going to get the um, pendulum working and get the striker striking against the sp spring that it makes the sound with and then I'll let it run and I'll regulate it as an adjustment at the top or you can, you can alter the length of the um, pendulum as well. So I'll experiment with those things and get it going right and then we'll see about getting it delivered to my son. It should be finished then. Well I finally got all the main components back together now and as you can see it's functioning very well. So all I've got to do now is to put all the bottom parts on and get the mechanism for the pendulum going and then we should be back in business. Well I've got it clicking away now as you can see it's functioning okay so I've got it running now without the pendulum so I'm going to let it run like that for half a day or so and then we'll get the pendulum in place and it should be finished ready for delivery well the clock run all through the night with no pendulum on and today I've got it working now with the pendulum on you can see it functioning quite well there I find the best way to set these clocks up it's got to be perfectly level and it's got to be perfectly level every way front to back side to side and if it's not that then it's not going to work I find the best way is to let it run without the pendulum on put all the rest of the mechanism in place leave it running for as long as you want half a day overnight whatever and then try it with the pendulum on if it doesn't work you've got to pack it up a little bit at the side but eventually you'll get there it's a case of perseverance once you've got it set up right it's really good and then just to regulate it you just either increase the weight or lower the weight on the pendulum and like on this clock there's a little adjustment on the front at the top so you can use that as well so I'm going to say that's done now and I'm very pleased and I'm very glad that it's going to be out of my way finally I'm feeling more like Doc Martin repairing clocks now 